Peru is in a deep crisis. After several years of political turmoil, our economy is stagnating, and the apristas, a leftist movement, are rising in popularity. The state has done nothing to solve the social and economic problems fracturing our country. Our current leader, Oscar Benivides, a de facto dictator, has to leave and his so-called election has to be delayed. Another form of government that has worked before needs to be implemented. The vice royalty, the glory days of our nation will be restored. So, with Benavides gone and the provisional government in place, it will begin electing a king. After more than a month of debates and arguments, the majority decided to invite Carlos I from Spain. We must remember our Hispanic past, the past of prosperity without the corrupt republic. And he accepted the throne, viva el rey! But our population weren't so quick to accept him. The apristas and old republicans have denounced the monarchy and risen up against our vice royalty. They don't know what's best for Peru. We must immediately unite the country. The royal militia has secured Lima, but the rest of the country is in chaos. We managed to secure Caramarca, one of the three biggest cities, just in the beginning of the conflict. After that, we decided to march along the coast to their headquarter Arequipa. For some reason, they had no divisions in the area, as most were in the east towards Brazil. So we could capture their headquarter and the second city. Despite not having initiated any major battles with the rebels, they fled into Brazil and we could secure our whole nation. We must now immediately boost our stagnating economy and secure the country for our king. The vice royal system will be restored. It was the root of our old empire and it will be in our new one too. But with these fundamental changes in our society, some people will get angry. We must form the royal guard for the safety of the king and allow him to reform our empire without constant threats of terror attacks. Now we can continue with our economic reforms and nationalize the industry. This will allow us to improve our mining operations and implement autarky. But we have more pressing matters on our hands. In Spain, a civil war has broken out. We must secure the power of Carlos so we can declare Hispanism and send troops to the Spanish junta. While we first have to actually improve our army and industry, it is still soon time to expand beyond our borders. So, the rey has declared Hispanism. Our goal is to unite Hispanic America and bring back the glory of the Spanish Empire. But we can't reunite it without a pro-monarchy government in Spain. We have to send our best volunteers to support the Carlist cause. While our two best divisions were shipped over, we expanded our mining industry, began industrial modernization and finally set in motion our plans of autarky. As we arrived in Bilbao, the Second Spanish Republic had captured Burgos. But we have almost no intel on the area, a counterattack would be impossible. So instead we will try to capture Oviedo. At first we didn't make any progress at all, but once a Carlish division arrived to help us, we managed to advance to the outskirts of the city. Sadly, they had garrisons in it and we couldn't enter. We tried an attack around it, but had to stop due to Republican advances in Valladolid. With the help of Soviet tanks, they had pushed the Carlists back. We must help them retake this land. As we arrived to the battle, we actually managed to push them back without any Carlist help, and soon we had arrived outside Valladolid. But we made the stupid decision of retreating and instead trying to encircle them. This didn't work since the Soviet tanks easily destroyed our attempt. And they are also getting closer and closer to Bilbao. Our only hope is to free up a ton of divisions in the west. But as we moved our troops to the area, the Soviets had broken through and closed in on Bilbao. We decided to send our troops back to Peru, fleeing the country just before the Carlists surrendered. 
Our dream in Spain has been shattered, but our American dream is still possible. At home we have implemented autarky and begun industrialization. With the new modern machinery starting to get produced in our country, we will seize old gold mines and reopen them to supply our economy with gold investments. And with all this new money we will finance construction programs in Lima and begin to build our own military industry. While we now have one of the strongest industry in the region, our military is still weak. With only 45,000 men, we need at least double that if we want to start to unify Hispanic America. We have already begun limited conscriptions, but it isn't enough. So we will integrate the Quechuas, an aboriginal group, into our military, promising to unite their lands and grant them some autonomy. We can now begin to train 60,000 new soldiers. To get enough equipment we will import some from the Czechs who are selling it for really cheap. But all our neighbors can also simply import more guns and match our expansion. So with a part of our gold money we will also import Italian artillery to equip our royal guard with. Hopefully it will be too expensive for our enemies. We also prepared our royal guard to the harsh climate of jungles by equipping them with special jungle equipment. So we should be ready to deal with our weakest enemy, Ecuador who has stolen Pastaza from us some years ago. Our infrastructure has been prepared and two new air bases for our minuscule air force have been built. Colombia and Venezuela will both turn hostile towards us, but if not now, they would be once we invade them in the future. So the war can begin. They had divisions on all tiles, but we had more of them. We decided not to try and capture Iquitos right away since the city is surrounded by rivers. Instead, we advanced from Piura and could advance to the city without having to cross one. Once we reached it, we still launched the attacks from the river despite our disadvantage, but with almost 10 divisions against one, it was still worth overwhelming them from all sides. Pastaza has been reclaimed, but the war isn't over. All of Ecuador will be ours. We decided to launch our next attack straight towards their capital and it was well worth it. Despite the high attrition, our overwhelming numbers crushed them and as we entered the city they surrendered. With their industry seized, we probably have a stronger one than the Brazilians. But our lack of resources are plaguing our production lines. We need more steel and right now. And what better way to get it than to immediately invade Colombia while they are weak. The Andes mountain are protecting the northern parts of the border, but we have our chance in the southern states. The Amazonas will be a perfect area for our elite royal guards. And it worked, as quick as we declared war they had cut through the defenses and pushed deep into their country. Despite us not reaching Bogota, we still managed to encircle three Colombian divisions and crush them. We will now hopefully capture their two last plane tiles and then cut around Bogota freeing up a way to the Caribbean Sea. Once again our elite jungle specialists did the job and we had soon arrived to the Andes Mountains. The closest supply hub was all the way back in Ecuador and the Colombians were transporting troops north through Bogota. So we decided to try our luck to capture the city and its supply hub. Surprisingly their defenses were lacking and after only a few weeks we managed to capture the city. But our path to the Caribbean isn't done. Having captured Bogota we managed to halt the big Colombian troop convoy on its way to protect the north. So we could slip past it and capture their second capital Cartagena. The Colombian government surrendered and we could annex their states and seize their small navy. We have enough steel now, so we can start to expand the national arsenal again and maybe we can equip our whole army with artillery in the future. But their expansions can't stop now, we have a perfect momentum that has to be maintained. The Venezuelan fascist dictator will probably declare us an enemy against their Bolivarian dream. We must destroy them now while their best divisions are fighting in Chile and they haven't become rich on their oil yet. 
Before the war started, we actually got enough equipment to equip our whole army with support artillery. As we declared war, they didn't have enough men to fill the whole front line. So in the center of it, we began to march towards their capital. On our way, we managed to surround Maracaibo and one division capturing and destroying them. Continuing towards Caracas, we encircled the second city, San Fernando de Apure. Still, we entered Caracas faster and the majority of their army gave up. We had to capture San Fernando before the war actually stopped. But with it ended, we have united all of Hispanic Northern South America. Now we will take a pause and build up our forces to then advance south all the way to Patagonia. To strengthen our army we will remind it of the legacy of the conquistadors. We will be as great as they were. But if we want to succeed in this we have to learn more from the Italians and begin to improve our division templates. For example, all our current infantry brigades will be upgraded to divisions of 18 width. Four new Royal Guard divisions will also be trained to make it a total of 8. Our army doctrine also needs to be updated. With professional officer corps this will go quicker. An example of our new doctrine is our flexible command. What counts is getting the job done, not following orders. Then we received a brilliant idea from one of the Quechua's officers. Ever since we began motorizing our supply lines we have had problems to reach mountainous terrains with our trucks. His idea was to instead begin to use llamas. They are an excellent pack animal that will help us fight more effective in the southern Andes mountains. With that brilliant idea and four more royal guards having been trained by accident, we should be ready. We will begin to prepare for another Pacific War. The first nation we have to deal with is Bolivia. They have turned communist and have adopted an expansionistic policy. We must stop them before they spread chaos throughout South America. So we declared war. <laughs> Next up, Chile. The democratic government managed to win their civil war and later joined the Swedish-British anti-fascist alliance. But we aren't scared of them. The British Empire has slowly started to crumble. They have already lost Egypt and Northern Ireland. There is even a chance that we have more divisions than them. So, while our elite royal guards secure Chile, the rest of our army will garrison our ports and capture British Guyana. The Polish Peasant Union has sent volunteers to Chile, but still, let's go south. We are so close to be able to declare the unification of Hispanic America. Only three nations left, Panama, Paraguay and Argentina, the latter being our strongest enemy yet. We will keep only one division per port in the north while the rest turn south and we will also begin to train nine more divisions for the Argentinian front. Our plan is to cut their country in half by marching from Santiago all the way to Buenos Aires. Let it begin. Unsurprisingly, we broke through their first line of defense. At first we could advance in our wide formation, but soon Argentinian reinforcements arrived on our flanks and the offensive got narrower and narrower. We managed to enter Rosario, but once more Argentinian reinforcements arrived, they kicked us back again. Our front has become a bit too big. 
and our plan to divide their country has failed. We will have to retreat from the Magalanese, not like there is anything important there anyways. Our second solution is that we deploy another 9 divisions to fill all the gaps. With the normal units having arrived in our spearhead, we can retreat a few royal guards to the north and try to shrink the front. We only dared to move out half of them, but before we could start our offensive, surprising news arrived from Canada. A few years ago, they had broken away from the British crown and joined the Americans. Now they have declared war on the British to take back Labrador. This means the American navy might totally destroy the British. But this means there is a huge risk of the Brazilians joining the war too and we can't let them occupy Uruguay. So despite the high concentration of Argentinian troops in the center, we have to restart our attack here. It is the fastest way to Montevideo. We still had half of our elite divisions in the area and with their help we could capture Córdoba and re-enter Rosario. With Rosario captured and the other half having arrived from the north, we divided our troops in two. One half going to Buenos Aires and the other into Uruguay. After a long fight, we did manage to enter the Argentinian capital, but we arrived too late to Montevideo. The Brazilians took it before us. The only way to get it back is to finish this war and enter a peace deal, meaning we have to defeat the British. So let's get to work. The Italians have for a long time tried to get us into their faction. We will join now to get access to Ireland, the perfect stepping stone to Great Britain. But first we have to quickly finish off Argentina. They are already 86% to surrender. We might only have to capture the rest of the Buenos Aires region and they'll surrender. Our army began a total attack south but it went a bit too fast and Buenos Aires was left completely open. Sadly they saw this and liberated the city. Still our offensive to the south was completely unstoppable and we had soon captured Mara del Plata encircling Buenos Aires. It didn't take long before we had re-entered the city and capture the second city in the south. After that they surrendered. So on to Britain. After a bit more than 90 days almost our whole army had arrived in Ireland and we have prepared the invasion. We gave the orders to our small navy to support the invasion. They won't expect a thing. We landed around Liverpool and attacked the city garrison from the sea. We tried to encircle them by capturing Manchester but they managed to escape. Still the Liverpool port has been captured. The rest of our army can be invited in and we will flood the UK. Just like in Argentina, we decided to split their island in two by capturing Hull and even encircling Grimsby. We will first occupy England and then turn north to Scotland. Only two lonely divisions opposed our invasion, both were easily pushed back. After only about a week, we had already captured Cardiff, dividing Wales from England too. The Brits and Argentinian exiles had managed to set up a defense of London, but not in any neighboring cities. So we simply marched around them and encircled the city on all sides. Then we could move house to house and soon our flag flew on the Big Ben. After capturing the rest of England, the British government surrendered, not even trying to put up a defense of the Scottish Highlands. Still, the war isn't over, our incompetent allies can't even defeat the Swedish without our help. We sent over our elite divisions capturing Örebro and Westeros and then turning east to Stockholm. After capturing Stockholm, they still thought they could hold us back. So we showed them that this was impossible by marching all the way to Lapland and then they finally surrendered. The war is won and we have secured so many new colonies for the Spanish crown. First of all, we annexed all South American states. South Africa and three more African nations have joined us. We also got New Zealand and a ton of random island, but most importantly we have secured three crucial trade hubs. Singapore, Cassaba and that's right, Gibraltar. Luckily, the Italians were kind enough to defend the port from any Spanish communists trying to seize it, so in the future we can use it to reinstate the Spanish crown and return from our de facto exile. 
But first, we have to finish uniting Hispanic America. And it won't be difficult. We defeated the British. Paraguay and Panama are nothing compared to them. We decided to destroy the fascist government in Central America too while we were at it. But with Mexico having joined the North American alliance, we should call it a day. We can finally proclaim Hispanic America united. Our economy, military and political system are finally united again. The Gran Confederación de Hispano America is here. We have one of the biggest industries in the world and our infrastructure is binding together our whole nation. Our dream of a Hispanic America has come to a reality. There is only one thing left to do, return to Spain. The communist government that won the civil war has repressed our Carlist friends but they have resisted total integration and constant fights between them have led to a weak Spanish army. Still we have to hurry up. They have soon recovered from the civil war and their industry is quickly expanding. But we were too late, they had managed to befriend the French and join their faction. But no worries, the Italians will help us. Just as the war began they tried to enter Gibraltar but we massively outnumbered them and once they stopped their attack we began to break into Spain. Cadiz, Sevilla and Malaga all got liberated almost immediately. There was no one stopping us. A few French and Spanish divisions arrived but they did nothing to halt our advance. Having captured Almeria we sent in extra divisions to help our advance. We can now liberate the rest of Spain and the Destroy the French. Done it, the Carlist monarchy is back. We will now start a long process to rebuild the Spanish nation with the help of our American riches. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.